So what I do, um, I'm currently a professor over at the College of St. Rose, entering year number six. Uh, as Morthy mentioned, I've got my degrees here and still teach here. I do the operating systems course the last couple of semesters. And I'm on deck to do it again. Um, and I recognize some of you from some previous operating systems course. The um, something I do on the side is uh, web development. And um, so I used to, before I finished PhD and so on, I worked about 10 years um, in industry, um, in the field, you know, writing software, software architecture, things like that for the corporate world. Um, and one of the things that that's evolved into is me doing consulting now, doing web development, building websites, um, not so much just fancy ones. I'm not a designer by any means, but I'm to stay in the frame of the camera. Um, my wife's much more artistic than I am. But I'm at least putting all the nuts and bolts together. And so one of the things, I'm not a, um, a contributor to any of these open source projects as of yet, but I am a heavy user. I use these open source projects, or these open source tools quite a lot, as you'll see. Um, and so we start with certainly HTML and CSS and all those things, but really work very quickly up to a lot of other um, aspects of the web development world. How many folks build web pages or know HTML? I'm guessing all of you dabbled in that. Anyone do HTML, CSS, some real major kind of work there? A couple of you? Good, okay, so you have some idea what I'm up against and what, what I try to do with web, web development. Um, in particular, I want to talk about, at least at the onset here, uh, link, and then also talk a little bit about Drupal, which is the open source project, you may recognize that. Um, I have not used Drupal a lot, so that's certainly the disclaimer up front. I'm no expert, but I'll show you the things that I've read about anyways and things I've maybe dabbled with a little bit uh, to get an idea as to what Drupal can do. And we'll talk about why I might want to use Drupal as well. So real quickly, the um, <clears throat> LAMP kind of architecture, of course there's Linux at the bottom, there's the Apache web server on top of that. And maybe more side by side to that, there's the MySQL database. And then on top of that, PHP. Or maybe Perl, Python, some other language that starts with P that fits there. There's a few. Uh, usually PHP is the one that people have in mind when they talk about LAMP. And uh, pretty much all these things, there's certainly Linux, Apache, MySQL, you recognize, I'm sure, is open source um, tools, large scale and large and widely used open source tools. Um, so I certainly rely on those for all the sites that I built. Uh, by no means am I a Microsoft person, so I have no idea how to use the .NET or any of that kind of stuff. Um, so this is my world right here for building sites. One of the, um, maybe other, or a few other things I'll just write down is, of course, this stuff here. That maybe sits on top of that as well. Whereas the PHP or maybe the Perl or Python is doing stuff on the server, generating pages that um, or generating HTML, um, maybe generating or at least using CSS and relying on JavaScript for some of the um, interactive things that we want to do on the web. So what I wanted to show you is kind of um, one site that I'm currently working on. And, it's, and again, I did not do the design for this, um, but I'm, my job is to kind of put it all together and make it work. And this is a relatively early stage, so it's a nice time to look at this and kind of see what these tools which I'll show you here in Firefox can do for us. Now the first thing you'll see actually with this, and this is just in the staging area, um, this is uh, the pink orange is the name of the company um, that I'm building this site for. I'm gonna actually try to shrink it down to fit on the screen here. One of the things that the person who owns this company, Rebecca, um, wanted to make sure of is that her design, even though it's 1280 by whatever, you know, was that big, even though that's not the best fit for presentation or a lot of uh, older monitors. But anyways, that aside, this page right here, and uh, much of the pages which are now working are all in PHP, and they all, as you can see, you know, generate the HTML and the CSS behind that. The, um, what I want to show you, though, is this toolbar up here, which is the, um, the web development toolbar. And actually, let me take a, a step back for a minute and go to, see if I remember the right site. It is. I'm sure you all have checked this out before, the addons.mozilla.org, and there are many, many different add-ons you can add to Firefox here. Yeah, here, one group is doing an add-on to Mozilla for scheduling tasks. Oh, excellent. Cool. So you know it inside and out then, better than I know it, I'm sure. 
But if I look up Firebug, or that's the name of one of the tools, Firebug is um, something I'll show you and play around with in a minute, as well as Web Developer. If you look up Web Developer here as well, that's another thing that I've downloaded or added on to, the, um, to my Firefox install. And there it is, Web Developer. So we get a toolbar out of this. And amongst the options in the toolbar, we actually have the ability to disable various things. Disabling the cache is probably the handiest thing that I end up using. Um, and again, I'm largely a user of these tools, so forgive me for not digging into maybe how these things work behind the scenes. But, but one thing with web, develop, web development is you, you know, build PHP, you build HTML, you build adjusted style sheets, and you're constantly uploading them um, and then reloading the page and saying, okay, did that work? Did that move this thing over here? Or did I make that so that the mouse over does something that I want it to do? Uh, so by disabling the cache, that means that I'm not fighting with the browser. You know the browser's going to try to cache various uh, pages or, or images, for that matter. And I don't want that because I'm developing. And I want that to reload it every time because I'm making changes to that. So disabling cache is something very handy. Um, I mentioned JavaScript is in here. So you can disable JavaScript. Which is also good. Um, some folks may not have JavaScript enabled, so you want to make sure that your site actually works or does something without JavaScript. If I disable the JavaScript here, I lose. I have a drop-down menu over under this wedding. Uh, by the way, if she does stationary, as you can maybe see. But under this wedding, there's a drop-down menu that now doesn't appear. Uh, different effects. So I can't click on this to show. Or I can't click that to experience anything, unfortunately, with the JavaScript disabled. So let me undisable it. You see, that'll just change the images. Just a simple image rotation there. So the toolbar allows me to, to try these different things out very, very easily. There's a bunch of other things, disable pop-ups, disable um, page colors even. Some of the other things along, I'll just walk through the toolbar and show some of these. Uh, cookies is another thing that's often certainly used um, on uh, these websites. So I can get rid of cookies. I can clear out the session cookies. I can disable cookies altogether and see what happens with my site in that regard. Uh, but something maybe cooler than that, something I've been using more now, is CSS. So a lot of the work, ideally, uh, you build HTML. Maybe I'll just show you a quick a bit of source code here. Pull it up. But ideally, as I bring this up, you um, have a stuck menu. But ideally, you want your HTML to just have your content. Uh, the original really intent of the web was to just show content and not have all the style and extravagant stuff that it kind of evolved into. So for example, if I bring up just the index, what we're looking at right now, you know, there you recognize maybe toward the bottom some HTML, and above it is PHP. So ideally, what I want to do in my um, my HTML is not have any style information. I have as little style information as, as I can. Um, in fact, that's it. That's the welcome page. Not much to it. Um, all or Most of what's happening on the welcome page is actually driven by the style sheets. So the style sheets will tell you know, where all the things go, what colors there are in a lot of cases. Um, there's a lot of images here, very image heavy, because that's what Rebecca is all about with her design. Um, so even these up here, unfortunately, are images instead of text. Uh, which is not the best for search engines, but um, through some other sneaky techniques, I have the text behind there um, hidden off screen, so at least the search engine will see it. But anyways, dealing with the style sheets is important, and so I can look at this menu here and disable uh, various styles. For example, turn all the styles off, turn the browser default styles off. I can also display the CSS by media type. And um, the way the style sheets work with HTML, you specify which style sheets you want to use. You can say, I want to use this style sheet when someone tries to print. Or I want to use this style sheet when someone's looking at this site on a handheld device. So you can specify that right in the HTML code to load up certain uh, style sheet files. I don't think I have one for this. Let me actually go to maybe a site some of you will recognize here. Let's see if it's in the cache. There it is. Um, this is my home page where operating systems and all the other courses are off of this page. Uh, but if I play around with this a little bit, if I 
which I haven't tried to see if it works, if I just look at the print style sheet, when I go to print it, you can see it actually makes it a little bit nicer, more printer friendly. So the backgrounds are gone as one column. So that's kind of some of the power behind this, this Firebug. And by the way, of course, this is all open source, this Firebug and the web uh, developer toolbar. So that's something which is very handy. I can also view the CSS, so not necessarily looking at my own web pages. I might be looking at other pages saying, oh, I want to figure out how did they do that. So I can certainly view the CSS. Um, I can view style information, which I'll, I'll show in a minute. I can actually also edit the CSS, which is interesting. Right? So usually I would go back to my editor, edit the CSS, upload it again. I can not edit it directly. And I've, I've only played with this a little bit, and it sort of works some of the time, I'll say. So for example, if I'm back on this page, go back to normal mode here. If I try to edit the, the style sheet, I can get a glimpse of it here as well. You know, I might change, let's see. For example, let me see if this will work. Change the font size to three and see what happens. So as I type, it's recognizing I'm making changes and it directly changes the page that I'm looking at. And this is all, as you can see in the URL at the top, it's just hitting you know, some remote machine. So it's editing it and applying those styles right to the page itself, which is, which is handy if I'm trying to get something maybe aligned just so or make something just fit the way I want it to, which may require a lot of trial and error over here with certain sizes or, or colors or whatever. I don't need to keep the up, you know, uploading the files and so on, which is a little bit slower. But what is also cool is you know, this, this doesn't have to be my site. I can go to CNN.com or Google or wherever and play around with their style sheets just to see, oh, how do they do this? I'll look at the style sheets, edit it further, see if I can make it fit for something that I'm interested in doing. So there is sort of that maybe community effect, you might say. Other things which are handy, let's see. That doesn't help me undo that. The, um, let's see if I can find the right option here. view. I just use it. Go back a page or two. Somewhere in here, and I have to <coughs> remember where that was. Well, let me try this. I think I there it is. Okay. 